Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Jen, aka Diamond Queen 2020. I'm going to do Miss Coffee's challenge of get to know me whipping chat. So pull out what you're working on, if it's diamond painting, crochet, cross stitch, it doesn't matter what the project is, pull it out and let's work together while I tell you a little bit about myself. Hopefully my nerve disease does not get in the way because I do get brain fog from it. But I will get into what's going on with me here in a little bit. So let's start with these. I got some questions written down. Okay. Let's see. Number one question, favorite way to spend, spend a day off? You see it. I love to diamond paint. I've learned to diamond paint, I've been diamond painting since March of 2020. Since the pandemic has started and I got laid off of work, I clicked on a, I don't remember what the company's name is, but I ended up clicking on a ad on Facebook, and next thing you know, here I am, diamond painting. Um, I also, when I can afford it, I love to go horseback riding. I love horses. So I like to do that. Um, number two, what type of music are you into? I enjoy pretty much all types of music, but my favorite type of music would be, I mean, they're the, they're total opposite of each other, but they would be R&B, pop music, and country. But if I had a choice, I'd probably listen to country music. And I like the 1990s R&B pop music, like NSYNC. Boys to Men, New Kids on the Block, um, Eminem's Old Music, Nelly, I've seen Nelly live, I've seen Destiny's Child, I saw them live, um, Ariana Grande, I like her music, Nicki Minaj, she's one of the best female rappers, I like hers. Tupac, he's pretty cool. I mean, he's real good. Um, number three, favorite ice cream topping. That would be chocolate syrup and whipped cream. Why? I am a chocolate fanatic. I love chocolate. Especially the, like, that creamy, delicious kind of chocolate. I do like some dark chocolate, but... If I was to pick a chocolate, it would probably be your normal Hershey's kind of chocolate. <laughs> favorite holiday? Well, I have two favorite holidays. My fiance is not really into my one of my favorites, but I love Halloween. I don't know what, what it is about scaring people at, at trick-or-treating time and Halloween time. I um, have volunteered and worked at a few haunted houses, and I loved every minute of it. Dressing up, putting makeup on, and scaling the daylights out of people. It's hilarious. It makes me laugh. I don't know why, but that's the only time of year I like to scare people is Halloween. And plus, I like all the decorations and the spookiness. Now... Going into a haunted house, I probably, I don't really like haunted houses. Because personally, I don't like being scared. But I like scaring other people. I guess, it doesn't make sense, but that's how I am. My other favorite holiday is Christmas. I love being around my family. I love watching them open gifts that I bought. Seeing the su surprise on their face of what I got them. You know, and ending up getting them something that they really wanted or that they needed. 
maybe not necessarily wanted, but needed. I love doing that. What's your go-to guilty pleasure? Um, my guilty pleasure would be ice cream. Truthfully, it would be ice cream. I love ice cream. Ice cream with chocolate syrup and whipped cream. Ooh, okay, you guys, that's making me kind of hungry. Um, let's see, next question. Favorite meal of the day? Um, that would probably be dinner. I love me some, you know, good meat. Good, delicious meat. Um, I love mashed potatoes and butter. Um, the other, my other favorite part, uh, favorite meal, I guess it's not really a meal, it's after a meal, but would be dessert. I love cookies and cakes and ice cream. I already told you my favorite ice cream, favorite pleasure, guilty pleasure is ice cream. Um, what do I do on my way to work? I listen to Pandora, and usually it is, um, Daryl Singletary. He passed away a few years ago, but he's a country singer, if you guys didn't know. But I like listening to him. My favorite song is, um, She Looks Good in, good in Black. That's a good song by him. Um, Love You With The Lights On. That's another good song by him. Uh, favorite season and why? Um, I most likely like... My favorite seasons would be spring and uh, fall. Because the temperature is not too hot. I don't like really hot atmospheres. My um, comfortable temp temperature would be 73, which is what I keep my house at most of the time. Unless if my fiancé decides to turn it down or turn it up. It's okay to turn it up a little bit, but turning it down, it kind of like makes me, makes me hurt. Because I don't like the cold. I'm a freeze baby. Um, I'll get to, get to why here probably in the next couple questions. Um, I like spring because I can watch the flowers bloom, and that's the time of year you get to plant your own own gardens and see your flowers grow, and that's when all the birds and all the wild animals have their have their young. And it's just a fun time of year. Fall because again not too hot, not too cold. Um also I love watching the the leaves change colors and I don't really like them on the ground because they can be messy and uh, annoying to clean up, which I don't have to clean them up because I live in an apartment. <laughs> um If if you could change a relationship with a member, a member with if with a family me family member, who would it be? Who would it be with, and why? That would be my father. Me and him have never been that close, and anytime I talk about him, I'll talk about him, his, mine and his relationship. I always cry because I so badly want that father-daughter close relationship and I've never received it and now that I am it I have a disease that is not curable and can progress really fast which it kind of has at this point um it's like I need him to communicate with me more now than ever and as much as I reach out, I know the road goes both ways, so I try to do my part. Every once in a while, he he does call or text me, 
to see how I'm doing, but most of the time, it's like I'm trying to pull teeth, and sorry, but that's not right to have to feel like you're pulling someone's teeth to get them to even talk to you. <laughs> he has a, a disease that is not curable, so he kind of feels, knows how I feel. <laughs> And, I mean, maybe, maybe this is a way me and him are going to start talking or something. I don't know. But that's the answer to that question. What's a relationship deal breaker? Trust. If I can't trust you, I can't be with you. Trust is definitely a deal breaker. If you break my trust, it's over. And cheating. Cheating is another thing that is definitely a deal breaker. Um, if you could have a superpower, what would it be? Um, I don't know, maybe to turn back time. Go back to when I didn't have this disease that I have. Um, go back to when I was younger and do things probably a little bit different. If you if you came back in your next life as an animal, what animal would it be? I would say either it would be a dog, uh, a dog, or a horse, but most likely a horse. And hopefully, I would have an owner that would love and cherish me and take me barrel racing. I mean, that would become the kind of horse I would be. Would be a barrel racer. So I love the speed and. The adrenaline that it causes. And it's just so much fun to go around those barrels fast and speed. What is your go-to midnight snack? Uh, again, I would say ice cream. If I have it in the house. Which right now I don't. So my midnight snack right now is, believe it or not, dry honey nut Cheerios. I know it's weird, but... I like to snack on those. Um, nacho cheese Doritos. Those are another good good midnight snack. <laughs> what did you want to be when you grew up? When you were a child? I would say... Um, I always wanted to be a police officer. A police officer or EMT. But I was stopped... Basically, right where I thought, wait, when I thought about doing it, I was pretty much, that that idea was pretty much scratched. I am legally blind in my right eye. And because of that, I could never be a cop. Because of the risk of uh, somebody shooting me or hurting me in my left eye. <laughs> and the chance of me becoming 100% legally blind. Sorry, guys, I didn't mean to shake you. <laughs> Legally, um, blind. So, that kind of, like, stopped that idea. So then, since I couldn't be an EMT or a, a police officer, I would say a veteran. Not a veteran, a uh, veterinary. Like a veterinary assistant. Working with animals. Um, I would probably pick... Reptiles, a place that does reptiles, oh no, a place that does horses, so I would pick a place like that, that works with horses and like does, um, helps mares have their babies, that would be pretty awesome. What are some of your, of your biggest fears? Um... I would say my biggest fear right now, as we sit here, would be to become paralyzed. Because back to the disease that I have, which I haven't talked about yet. Well, I mentioned it a few times, but with the disease that I have, I could become paralyzed. And that is very scary for me. Where do you see yourself in five years? Um, I really 
don't know the answer to that one. In five years, I would like to see... I would like to see me excel in possibly owning a house or buying a house. Um, maybe having a, like, leasing a horse that I can do Western Pleasure with or barrel racing with. Um, what else? When it comes to employment, I would like to see myself in five years be higher up in the job that I'm in right now because I love the company I'm with. So I don't see myself leaving this company unless if they fire me. And that's the only way I would leave. Um, that's about it. Uh, what, what year... What what year was I born in? I was born in 1985. January 22nd, 1985. That was the easy one. Favorite drink? Um, this depends if you want to know what, like a non-alcoholic beverage or an alcoholic be beverage. Alcohol would be, my go-to would be Jack and Coke. Non-alcohol would be Coke Zero, um, when it comes to coffee, it would be a, a Starburst, a Starburst, Starbucks Mocha, Mocha Frappe with, with a shot of espresso. <laughs> um, spirit animal, that would probably be horse. My spirit animal would probably be a horse because when when I ride a horse, I feel free. I feel like nothing can, nothing matters anymore except for riding that horse. Um, touching a horse, petting a horse really calms me. It's a very calming effect. Um, favorite perfume scent. Um, I would say Cloud by by Ariana Grande is one of my favorites. Anything by Ariana Grande is my favorite perfume. And in the wintertime, I really liked the, um, it was a scent by, um, who was it by, uh, I'm trying to think. It wasn't by anybody, but I bought it at, um, Bath and Body Works, and it was a candy cane or peppermint scent, which I wore this one at a time. Um, favorite YouTuber? Well, I have a few now. I would say Miss Coffee, Jeremy, Purple Dwarfs Crafts. Um, I would have to say Tia. Ta 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 Tia. She's one of my favorites. She always makes me laugh. Um, I like watching Rebecca, who is Crafting Adventures, I think her name is. It's hard to remember everybody's YouTuber name, but, um,. I like watching her morning shows. Very interesting when she does like the um National Day. Like one day it was National Cuddle Cuddling Day. Um, who else do I like watching? Oh, I like Stitcherista because I love the, the the crime stories that she does. I watch every one of her crime stories. I love that. Okay, favorite Netflix show? That would be called Heartland. It's about horses, about a girl, this girl named Amy takes in horses that are like troubled horses or the owner can't get them to do something or they're, they have like a bad behavior that the owner doesn't really like. She takes the horse and rehabilitates the horse so it's like a real uh 
like a rehab kind of thing, kind of deal. But it's called, um, I forget what her saying is now. Ice cream flavor. Favorite ice cream flavor. Um, that would be, that would be vanilla ice cream with chocolate swirl. Since I can't really have the one I love anymore because I'm allergic to it. Um, favorite color? My favorite color is, um, blue and pink. Pink and blue are my two favorite colors. So if I had to pick it, it'd probably be blue. What concerts have you been to and what was your favorite? Um, I have a whole list of con of concerts I've been to. My fiance, who I love very much, has taken me to most of these concerts. There's a place here in Indiana called Eight Second Saloon. Eight Second Saloon is a country nightclub that is also a concert hall. So they have different acts come in and perform and sing and and some of them are pretty well they're not like really popular anymore but like in the 1990s they were really popular um joe diffie who passed away last year due to covid he was pretty popular there i had vip tickets to see him live and I still have the tickets. I need to go exchange them for, go get my money back from them. Because that's $30. Um, I've seen Terry Clark. I've seen Terry Lawrence. He was really good. Justin Moore. Jake Owen. Uh, Jason Michael Carroll. Um... Let's see what's his name? Something Lee Murphy. Um who else have I seen? Tracy Lauren. Uh Tracy Bird. I saw him and I met him. I actually have a picture. Yeah, I'll show you guys the picture. Hold on. <laughs> oh, it's not in here. Never mind. I can't show it to you guys. Um if I had it in here I'd show it to you guys. But me and my fiance got a picture with Tracy Lauren Tracy Bird. <laughs> He sings our song. Our song is Keeper of the Stars by Tracy Bird. Um, I would have to say my favorite concert that I would definitely go to again, which I've seen him, I think, twice already. I would see Tracy Lawrence again. He was really good. And I would see... Um, God, what is his name? I can't think of his name right now. Like I said, my brain fog gets a hold of me sometimes. So, yeah, I can't think of it right now. If you could live anywhere, where would it be? If I could live anywhere, anywhere in the U.S., I would want to live in Gatlinburg, Tennessee. I love the mountains. The Bat Mountains make me feel like so free and happy. It would probably help with my my nerve pain. Um, if it was out of the United States, I would say probably Ireland because I actually have family over there that I've never met, but I have family over in Ireland. Um, one of the YouTubers that I like to watch, her name is Rachel Ray. No, she's not the cooking Rachel Ray. She is the crafting Rachel Ray. She lives over in Ireland. Right now she's kind of like, she's not like stuck, but she's, she's here in the U.S. right now. Visiting family until what, the end of February, I think she told someone. If I remember correctly. So hopefully she can get back over to Ireland. Um, country or city? I would definitely pick the country because there I can have horses and I don't know. It's just, it's just beautiful out in the country. 
hopefully you guys can see me done the painting. Um, what's on my bucket list? Um, one of the things I could think of off the top of my head right now, because, I mean, I'm kind of, like, put, put on, put on the spot there, I guess you can say. I could have wrote down my bucket list, I guess. Um, one of them would be to see Garth Brooks live in concert. I've been wanting to see him since I was 15. Um, another one would be to visit Ireland someday. <laughs> that would be one of my one of my things on my bucket list. Um trying to think what else would I wanna do. <laughs> Exceed in life. That's on my bucket list, I guess. <laughs> And that's the last of the questions. Um, this disease I keep talking about, which I'm pretty scared about, and I guess I could talk about it in my in my weapon chat. I don't see why not. And if you don't like this part, you can always exit out, because this can be considered, I guess, taboo. I don't know, because now I'm going to talk about my health and what's going on with me. We'll start back in in April of 2020. Well, I think it's due to my broken toes back in November of 2019. But I've had a few doctors already tell me that's not the cause of what's going on. Nobody knows the cause because um, the disease I have is small fiber neuropathy. And I'm in the midst, I'm in the first stages of being diagnosed. Once diagnosed, I went and seen my neurologist on Tuesday. I had two skin biopsies done on Tuesday. One on my upper hip and one on my ankle. I would say the hip one, getting the shot of Novocaine didn't really hurt on my hip but getting the shot on my ankle that hurt a little bit more and like my fiance said because there's more fat on your, your thigh I'm like yeah I guess that makes sense but when he went to take the skin like do the biopsy part I couldn't really feel him doing it on my ankle but I could feel almost the whole thing on my on my hip um, when it comes to pain medicine, like nerve block or like a shot of, of, um, uh, like when someone does a shot of Novocaine, you know, in your mouth, I don't stay numb very long. Like the dentist will look and say, oh, you'll be numb for next three to four hours. <laughs> I'm not numb that long. I'm numb maybe an hour, if that. But he has to give me a lot of Novocaine because when he leaves the room to let the Novocaine take, do its job, you know, and numb me up and everything, I am numb to touching my face when he comes back in, but I'm not numb to him being able to pull a tooth, if that makes any sense. In order for you to pull a tooth out of my mouth, you have to give me Novocaine, and you have to give me laughing gas. That's the only way you're going to be able to pull my tooth. I'm running out of this color. This color is running low. See? It's number seven. I'm about to see if I have more of it, which I'm sure I do. Which I need to figure out what I did. The leftover little for this. What, whoa, George? Oh, I have to see if I can find them. Sorry, I keep on sniffling, guys. I'm sorry, I have a stuffy nose. Hmm. I know I have leftover drills somewhere. I'll have to find them. I'm not worried about it right now. Um, because I have plenty to do besides just this one color. Uh. So. 
I'm in the beginning stages of being diagnosed with this disease. In April, I woke up one day in April and my foot was asleep. My right foot felt tingling and numb and it just felt weird. So, you know, I didn't really think of it. I was like, okay, well, my foot's asleep. Hopefully, I'll, it'll probably wake up and I'll be back to being back to normal. That didn't, that never happened. My right foot has been numb since April of 2000, of April of 2020. And they don't know why. I went to the neurologist. He, he did the exam. He said, yep, your daughter has neuropathy in her foot. And what's causing it? We don't know. Because I don't have any of the underlining diseases that causes this disease. Which would be diabetes or immune deficient disease like colitis or lupus and stuff like that. That can cause this. I've never had any kind of dye, like contrast dye, that can cause it. I never had any of those. So I left the the neurologist knowing, you know, yeah, you probably have it. And there's a chance it could just fix itself and it'll go away and you'll be back to being normal. But then there's a chance it's it could be permanent. And I'm like, well, that kind of scares me. He goes, well, I wouldn't worry about it until we see if it goes away on its own. He had me do an EMG, so I went back a couple days later and had the EMG done. EMG came back as normal, so it's not my big fibers. So then he looked at my mom and said, okay, this came back negative. This came back normal, so negative for big fibers. So it's got to be small fiber. And I'm like, okay, what's, what is that? And how do we detect that? He goes, we have to do a skin biopsy. And I still have to do blood work, which I will do probably on Monday. Um, we're already at 32 minutes, which I need to do an hour. Um, so I went back. And when I went back, the the second or third time I think it was my left foot has become numb and tingling and pins and needles when I walk on it in the whole nine yards so then the woman looked at me and said well we are no longer going to do the MRI because he also wanted to do an MRI of my feet and my nerve my nervous system to see if there was any like pinched nerve or anything going on in my back she's like well we're gonna scratch that idea I'm like why is that she said because now your left foot is numb so we are definitely thinking this is small fiber I'm like okay so then I left and now my upper my lower legs are cramping I get muscle spasms in it I have you know numb feeling in my legs my hands I have pretty much lost all strength in my hands my hands feel like a tight glove being put on them and that has to do with small fiber from what I what research I have done I have joined groups in Facebook for small fiber I have done research as much as I can to figure out what I can do to help myself from, you know, this pain and discomfort that I'm having. Um, since, not since Tuesday, but since the, that last appointment, well, actually, since April, uh, January, the beginning of this month, they have put me on uh, gabapentin, 300 milligrams at night. I was supposed to do it 
at night for three days, and then in the morning and at night for three days, and then morning, noon, and night for probably the rest of my life. Well, we end up not doing that, because I don't know if I can handle that much guy petting at one time. So, when I went to see him on Tuesday, I um told him what was going on, and he said, well... I will, we will do 300 milligrams during the day, during the night, and we will do 100 milligrams during the day. Well, since then, I, they have not called that prescription into the pharmacy yet, so I need to figure out what's going on with that. Um, and then I asked him about Mayo Clinic. The Mayo Clinic they know they have doctors there that could help me and help me with figuring out what treatment would work for me it's gonna be a whole day of nothing but testing poking prodding exams you know to figure out try to figure out what can help me because like i said i don't want to become paralyzed if I can help it, I will not become paralyzed. Um, so my mom's doing doing the research and trying to. She found one in Minneapolis, Minnesota, which is probably the closest one to us. My fiance said, "Let's go to Jacksonville, Florida." Well, that's a little bit of a drive. And my mom and stepdad just came from Florida, so. I mean, I guess if you want a warm climate, go down to Florida. And I guess if you want a cold climate, go to Minnesota. But it's probably going to be a couple months before we go. Because now we're ready, just sitting here waiting for the results of this testing that I just had done. I just had the skin biopsy done on um Tuesday, so... I'm going to say by next week, I should know the results, <laughs> which I'm pretty nervous about, but yeah. And I go back on the 26th to see the neurologist and see what our game plan is. And I've been doing this all basically by myself. They let my, my fiance in the back room with me when I got the biopsy done so he could hold my hand. And, of course, he looked away when he did the shot and when he pulled the skin off. He's like, I didn't want to see that. I'm like, I did, but he won't let me. I mean, I'm, I, I, I don't know why, but medical stuff doesn't phase me. Seeing blood, seeing, you know, gory stuff like that, like medical gory stuff, it does not bother me. It doesn't even make me crazy. Watching someone puke, that's a little bit different, but I still have a pretty strong stomach and I can handle it. I don't like seeing someone puke or have the shits everywhere or anything like that. Sorry about the language. Um, let's see, what else? Oh, I guess I could tell you where I was born and raised and where I grew up at. I was born in... Bartlett, Tennessee, which is a suburb of Memphis. I was born actually at the Memphis Memphis Hospital in Tennessee. So I was born there. Um, I'm the baby of the family. I'm the youngest. I will be 36 on January 22nd, which is in about a week. Two weeks, maybe? I think it's two weeks away. Two weeks from, actually, from today. So, almost two weeks away. And if anyone wants to send me, like, Christmas, uh, birthday gifts or birthday cards or anything like that, you can get a hold of me on my Instagram or Facebook, which I always put in the description, to get my address. I do not give my address, I do not put my address on YouTube. So if you want it, 
you can message me and I will definitely give it to you. I don't have any any issue with giving you my address. So if you want to send me something for my birthday, you can. But it's really up to you. I do have a Patreon. And also, a lot of times I put my PayPal in the description too. So if you want to just send me a little gift that way, you can do that for my birthday. Um, But you don't have to. You definitely don't have to. There's no, no one says you have to do it. It's really on your discretion. But I appreciate if you did. I mean, obviously I would really love it. Because, I mean, I've only gotten one gift from a subscriber, and that's my first one ever. Hopefully not not only one, but maybe it's my one and only. I don't know. Um, when I was young, I don't remember exactly how old, my mom and, st my mom and dad got a divorce. Because they couldn't. I mean, they could be fr they're friends. They're definitely friends. They definitely get along. I mean, not for us kids anymore because us kids are all grown up. So there's no reason for them to get along now for the for the kids' sake. I mean, they did probably in the beginning. Like, well, we still need to be rational and get along and just deal with each other because we still have three kids. My brother is... He was born December 1st of 81. My sister was born August 30th of 84, I believe, or 83, 83 or 84, one of the two. Um, I'm gonna get a different color because this one's almost out. Let me figure out where my leftovers are. Um, what else can I, so we moved to Ashtabula. It's A S A S H T A B U L A, Ohio. I lived there most of my childhood life. My mom wanted us to stay near my dad, and that's when my dad decided to resign. He is still near Ashtabula. He's in Saybrook, Ohio, which is a suburb of Ashtabula, I guess. Not very far from, oh, not Erie, but uh, Cleveland. He's he's pretty close to Cleveland. He likes it there. He's been living there for quite some time. Him and my my stepmom. My dad's been married. He's on his third wife, and I think he finally found his his person. My mom has been married. She's on her second marriage. And she obviously found her person. They've been married for, I think, like 15 years, 16 years, something like that. Quite some time. My dad and my stepmom, I'm not even sure how many years they've been married, but they've been married for some time. And they're happy. They're both very happy with their, their significant others. Um... So, we moved to Beulah, that's what I call it for short. I lived there for a while, I mean, actually no, first we lived, we moved to Jefferson. I think we lived in Jefferson for a little bit, in, in Ohio also, it's like a little suburb or country area. We lived there for a little while, but then we moved to Beulah. I lived there until we moved to Strongsville, Ohio, which is a suburb of Cleveland, back in 2001-2002. I lived there for about a year with my mom and stepdad and sister. And then all four of us, my mom, my stepdad, and my sister, we all moved down to Kennesaw, Georgia. I lived there for about two years, three years. And that is where I lost the tip of my left thumb while 
during a horse accident. I was leasing a horse. The horse that I was leasing did not do this to me. I was done with my riding and my grooming and spending time with, with the horse. They asked me if I would help them get ready, get some horses ready for a trail ride. And I said, yeah, I'm not doing anything. So I walked away from the horse I was leasing, who, which was tied up. She was in the cross ties or whatnot. So I walked over. I, I told him, you know, I asked him, what horse do you want me to get? And they told me she's up in the paddock. This is what she looks like. So I went and got her, brought her in, tied her up, which, come to find out, she was never supposed to be tied. Well, of course, I didn't know that. Nobody told me she can't be tied. Um, and turned around, and I was with, I already had her tacked up and groomed and tacked up and ready to go. Ready to rock and roll to do this trail ride that they're going on. And I was over at my, the horse I was leasing, you know, petting her and, you know, brushing her down a little bit more. Just to spend time with her. I mean, that's what I was there to do. I was there to spend time with this horse that I was leasing. Spend some good money. Well, my mom spent some good money on leasing this horse. So, I mean... That's what you're supposed to do when you're leasing a horse, but spend time with it. I turn around, and the horse that I'm helping them get ready had it, had her nose to the ground. Well, I have always been taught when a horse does that, you go over and you tighten up the, the tie and keep their head from being on the ground. Well, when I did that, I spooked her. And when I spooked her, she reared up and backed up real hard. With the lead rope in my hand, I let go of the rope, so she she was loose. So of course I said I yelled, "Loose horse!" Which you know you're supposed to do when a horse gets loose. I looked down and my thumb is missing. So I'm sitting there screaming, "My thumb! My thumb! My thumb!" That's all I could do. I didn't even know it was gone until I looked down and my thumb was completely gone. Like, on the ground, gone. Sorry if this is pretty squeedish, squishy, you know, squeedish. Um, so they called 911. A girl from another barn, or one of the other barns in, on the property heard me screaming. So she picked up the payphone and dialed 911, and they said, you know, obviously, what's the emergency? And she said, I don't know what's going on. All I can hear is this girl screaming, my thumb, my thumb, my thumb. And they told her, hang up with me, hang up, go see what's going on, and call me back on a cell phone. Well, cell phones were still kind of new at this point. I mean, they weren't, like, everywhere, but I had a cell phone on me. And my little lunchbox mom, my mom, packed for me and whatnot. So I told him, grab my cell phone. One girl was on, on her grandma's cell phone or her grandma's phone or mom's phone or something. Dialing 911. And I said, you need to call my mom and let her know that I'm hurt. <laughs> they didn't tell my mom your daughter lost her thumb. They just said your daughter hurt her thumb and we would like you to come here and pick her up. Mom was like, okay. My daughter hurt her thumb. Okay. So she didn't think to, you know, rush over and be with me. So they're on the phone with number one, telling them, you know, they're telling telling them to put ice on it. And I'm like, no, I watched Rescue 911 many, many times. You never put ice on a wound like this. So I was like, hand me that paper towel. I wrapped the paper towel around my hand as tight as I could and squeezed to try to stop the bleeding. And I was like, now, t one girl actually walked in and found the tip of my thumb in the barn, on the barn floor. I feel really bad for her. I felt bad for her from, from that day on. <laughs> Poor girl. She was probably like, you want me to do what? Go look for what on the floor in there? <laughs> yeah. 
So I was like, take the tip of my thumb and put it in the ice. You know, to try to salvage it. Try to keep it from, from the blood. Because see, blood vessels die really easily from air and from like the heat. And it, I was in Georgia, so it's kind of warm there. And it's in the summertime that this happened. It was in August. So I was like, you need to put the, the thumb in the ice. You know, to keep it from getting too warm. Because if blood vessels get too warm, they die off. And we don't want that to die because we want to see if it could be reattached. Or something about that can be, can be saved. So, they put the thumb in there and, you know, the ambulance shows up. My mom's... My mom shows up in front of the ambulance, and she's freaking out. She's like, what? And she barely even put the car in the park. She's like, what happened? I'm like, I lost my thumb. You know, crying, and I'm not really crying at this point. I'm more like whining, <laughs> like a moaning, whining noise coming out of me, because I'm in shock, because I just lost my thumb. I mean, your body goes into instant shock. So the ambulance pulls in, you know, obviously my mom's freaking out. She no just noticed, you know, her daughter lost her thumb. So the ambulance pulls in and gets me all situated. And they asked me, are you feeling cold? And I'm like, yeah. They looked at each other and said she's in shock. So they, you know, put the IV in and gave me some fluids. And they could not get any sign of like any they couldn't get a blood pressure or or um heartbeat on the way to the hospital because i've you know i don't know if i lost too much blood or what or if i was too much in shock for them to for anything to register and then the guy in the back is like um there is no no i can't get any kind of sign and the guy in the front's like, what do you mean? He goes, there's no blood pressure or heart rate. Nothing is coming up on the screen. He goes, oh, well, keep trying. And, you know, they're trying to get me to the hospital as fast as they can, obviously, because, you know, I just lost my thumb. He pull in the hospital, and he goes, okay, now I finally got, got a reading. So he he read the reading over to the, to the doc, to the, you know, to the hospital that's waiting. So we get there, and this is two weeks after I've had a separate surgery. So I've, I've just healed from a surgery before this, two weeks prior to this happening. I had a, another operation. So mom looked at the, the nurse and said, no one's touching my daughter but the surgeon that did her surgery two weeks ago. So we waited for two hours in the hospital, waiting for the surgeon to get done with an operation here is in. I mean, he knew I was there. They went in and told him, you know, you have a patient here that you just did a surgery on two weeks ago. Well, she's here. And she lost the tip of her left thumb. So he comes in. At this point, they already gave me like six cc's of morphine and a bunch of other medicine to help with pain. He looks at me, looks at my mom and said, I might have to do a nerve block. I freaked out because, you know, I'm not really a nerve block kind of person. I don't, I did not like the nerve block. I screamed bloody murder and cried and I looked up and my mom was crying with me. I felt really bad for her, you know, having to see her daughter go through the, that. So that's the story about losing my thumb. So I do already have nerve damage in my hand. Maybe that could have caused this small fiber. I don't I don't really know what caused this disease, but I kind of wish I could go back and figure out what caused it, go back and change it, but there is no going back. <laughs> so here I am in pain day in and day out 
and everybody in my family, well, I don't know everybody, but my mom, my sister, and my fiance are, you know, they're scared. They're like, you know, this is the unknown. Nobody knows what's going to happen until, I guess, until it happens. <laughs> okay, guys, we're at 55 minutes already, so we're almost to an hour. Um, I guess I can tell you guys what I'm working on. I am working on Fire and Ice. And yes, I'm blinging it out big time. Um, I have, I don't know if you guys can see it. Here, let me, let me move you guys up a little bit. I'm working on the fire part. This is all the fire. But this is all crystal right here. I think it looks awesome. I'm excited about getting it done. So, um, got like five more minutes. Let's see, what else can I tell you guys, um, about myself? All I can tell you is how me and my fiance met. I left my ex of 12 years. Well, actually, we have been together probably about 14 years now. If I was still with him, we would have been together for 14 years. Um, let's see. I met my fiance September. Well, I didn't actually meet him September, but we started dating, seeing each other September 15th, 2018. So we've been together for almost two years. And I'm, I'm really happy with him. I mean, dang, that one's almost gone too. Twelve. I gotta see if I can find the other. Hmm. Hmm. I, I don't know where to find the my ABs at. That would suck. Well, not ABs, but the diamonds. This is for that. Ugh. I guess I can look and see if I can find them. Um. I guess I'll put this one away for right now because it's almost gone. Let's see. Three. Seems like all my all my diamonds are getting low. I know I have the spare somewhere. The leftovers for it. I just have to find them. Hopefully I find them. Um trying to think what else I could talk about for the next two minutes. I guess I could just thank you guys for watching this this video and if you have any more questions about uh, that you want me to answer about myself just go ahead and ask them. I mean I'm sure I'll I'll be happy to answer them. Um I really appreciate you watching this whole video if you made it through the whole thing. And you can keep me in your prayers if you want. I would appreciate that. Because, like I said, I'm pretty scared about this whole ordeal with this disease. Can't call it a virus because a virus is curable. The disease is not curable. And this is not, there's no cure for this. This treatment, there was definitely treatment, but there was no cure. And that's scary knowing you have something that can't be cured. Basically for the rest of your life. It sucks because, I mean, like I said, pretty scared. But, um, I met my fiancé at a place called Saddle Up. It's a, it's a country nightclub. That's where we met. 
and the rest is pretty much history. I mean, we've been together for two years. We're happy. We lived with, you know, we lived with my mom and made it through that. And now, here we are at my apartment. Out of our, at our apartment. But, uh, you guys have a great day. Stay safe. Please wear your mask. Be kind to each other. I mean, this is a time to be definitely kind to each other with everything going on in this world. But you guys have a great day, and I hope you enjoyed the video. And give me a thumbs up. If you like this video or any of the other videos you've seen of mine, please don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell so you know when I'm uploading a video or going live, because I go live periodically. I do pop-up lives. I don't really have a set day because there's so many people that go live. It's hard to pick a day and a time that someone else is not using. But you guys have a great day. Bye.